Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Today it's a preview of Sunday's game against the Kansas City Chiefs with my ESPN colleague Adam Teicher. The Chiefs too have problems, but I don't think these teams are in the same zip code right now when it comes to solutions. Also, a little fun talk as I'm joined by Ryan Barrows, the Vice President of Operations at Joe's Barbecue in Kansas City, a place I love. We talk brisket, tailgating, and more. Not everything has to be serious right now. You can follow Adam on Twitter at Adam Teicher. That's T-E-I-C-H-E-R. And you can read both our work on ESPN.com. I'll have a story up Saturday about the connection between Ron Rivera and Andy Reid. Before I make my prediction, a couple things. Let's start with the Sean Taylor retirement ceremony. My understanding is they started working on this a while ago, and I've heard that from multiple people outside the organization, including former players. This was not thrown together at the last last minute as a distraction. They can't make that many towels or lapel pins on a couple days notice. And they're, you know, so a lot of things were arranged. I know Ryan Clark, former Washington safety said he was told on September 22nd and others said they were contacted before about coming to town for a ceremony honoring Taylor. Now, some might say, well, they just said ceremony, not retirement. Okay. Is that semantics? I don't know. They already honored the guy a few years ago, or they honored his memory and his family by inducting him into the ring of fame. So let's just say that that was above board. Now, the bad part is the team, the team should have announced this when it was decided. Some fans who might have wanted to attend probably sold their tickets. I don't know why they waited to announce it. When they retired Bobby Mitchell's number, they didn't announce it three days before the game. Others didn't make plans to attend the game because why would they? It does not look like a good matchup, you know? So why are you going to invest your time and energy to a game where you think this team might get blown out? I don't think this was done as some distraction. I just think it was botched. I know some will never believe that, so you can stick to your opinions, and I'm not going to tell you to change it. I'll get to this in a minute. I'm sticking to what I know based on what other people outside the organization have told me about when they were contacted about this. But they definitely botched the announcement part of it. To me, this also highlights how much rebuilding they have to do when it comes to trust. I know Ron Rivera was asked about attendance earlier this week. It's by far the worst in the NFL. He said to change that, to change that, they have to win. I think this Taylor episode shows that they need to rebuild the trust too. Whether it's legit or not, the fact that so many believe this was meant to be a distraction is telling, very telling. And it's sad, but it's what the organization has built up over the years. It will take more than just a new quarterback or a couple decent winning seasons to change this. It's about the investigations, the DEA, and so many more other things over the years. The emails that came out this week, even though it was about John Gruden, it came from an investigation about this team and it brought all that stuff back up to the surface, which, and by the way, these documents, these emails were part of court filings in June and therefore public record. Will that lead to anything else? I don't know. The NFL has said they're done with the investigation and they know what's in the other emails and they're good with how everything turned out. I also told you that owner Dan Snyder doesn't use email. What else could come out? I don't know. And I, and again, we'll see. Anyway, good organizations start at the top. And while fans want to buy into the new regime, they can't get past the fact that one person remains the constant and that's Snyder. A year ago, Washington turned into a likable franchise for the season because of Rivera's battle with cancer and the Alex Smith comeback story. And then they won the division and Chase Young was a, was a star. And, but there are two decades of issues beneath the surface that always bubble up. I know the current regime from the business side to the football side gets frustrated when people can't move past this. They just say they just got here. <clears throat> but they've been told a few times that they have to understand this is the way it is with the fan base. They've been burned and they feel cheated and they they don't they haven't liked the organization for a long time. It's not as simple as, hey, they haven't won for a while, so let's go win. It's deeper than that. Rivera is still a good one, I think, to navigate this. It takes someone who doesn't panic over everything and who preaches a consistent message, even if it's one fans don't always want to hear. He's got a record of his own record built that he's going to rely upon. And that's, you know, so sometimes it's not about panicking and changing everything. 
but it is about staying consistent with what you believe. Now, the question is, is what he believes right? I don't know. Well, eventually the record will prove that out. But man, there's a long way to go. I feel your pain and I hear it quite often too. And this, it was, it's sad to see what happened in this Taylor situation because he, the memory of him this day, his family deserves better than to be considered this way. Now, they have been contacted a while ago from the organization. So they, I don't know that they would feel the same way as the fan base because they would have been contacted a while ago. But now it's become a big issue and it's just, it's disappointing and sad to see. Now, on to more pain and my prediction. Clearly, anyone looking at this game will like Kansas City. I picked a one touchdown win for the Chiefs, and obviously, you could easily see seeing it being more. And so can you. But the Chiefs also have the 29th ranked run defense. And as Adam will tell you in a few minutes, they're, it's, they're trou- they have a lot of troubles. Washington needs to control the ball with Antonio Gibson and the run game. It's a good week for him to have a 20 carry game. They have to convert point because time of possession here alone won't win. This team gives up too many quick touchdowns, but they do have a chance to move the ball and score points and possess the ball. The key, of course, with with Taylor Heineke is not turning it over. you got to take care of the ball, but that's where Gibson comes in. Create your identity Sunday with the run game. Now, defensively. The pass rush has been better the last two weeks. I don't think they can use the five defensive linemen set as much this week as they did against New Orleans. Now, in the, if, earlier this year, when they would go to that 5D line set, you'd have Young and, and Montez Sweat standing up. Lately, it's been a true five line, five defensive line set. It's not earlier, I'd say, oh, that looks more like a 3 4 because the way they're playing those linebackers, the ends, one of them would drop. That wasn't happening. This was a true 5 1 5 at times, a very different matchup. I don't think you can get away with that against Kansas City matchups outside are different than they are with the Saints and more dangerous. Most teams against the Chiefs only rushed four defenders. In fact, only 29 times have teams sent more than four against the Chiefs this season. That's in five games. So about five times a game, or maybe almost six times a game, they're sending more than four four, uh, pass rushers. While Buffalo played the soft cover two, for the most part, I'm not sure exactly what Washington will do. Now, in the mailbag, the Therapy Tuesday, I did – a couple of days ago, I did tell an email, I think it was Paul, that I thought you'd see more of that this week. I think you might, but I don't think it's for certain that they will. The other option is to stick with their cover one look. They've only played cover two 27 times this season, according to ESPN Stats and Info. But if they go cover one, they're going to use a safety or a linebacker in the middle to take away those crossers. It's a either cover one lurk, which is a safety in the middle, cover one hole, which is a linebacker in the middle. In theory, it's another way to defend this offense. And they're not, they're almost, they're reading that situation. It's not, this, they're not as assigned to an area as much as they're reading it. And so I think that you can take away some of those crosses the Chiefs like to do with Tyreek Hill. So that is another way they could do it. Um, I think you have to mix it up with them a little bit. And then you have to make sure that you get to Mahomes and maybe force him to continue on this interception streak, which again, we'll get to that with Adam Teicher in a minute. Anyway, I'm, I'm concerned, of course, about big plays. We've all seen the first five games. I'd be concerned about Travis Kelsey, though I'd use Cam Curl on him quite a bit and not Landon Collins. The problem with Kelsey is he will freelance sometimes a route on occasion, and he has chemistry with, with Patrick Mahomes to do so. They connect on those. I've seen that before in games where he breaks off a route because of a little wink, wink nod, nod, or whatever at the line of scrimmage, and Mahomes reads it the same way, knows he's going to break it off. So he may go against the tendency and the rules of a defense just in a freelance situation. Ultimately, that offense is too much for what Washington has been doing on defense. While, while there were times where they played better last week, not the same offense they're facing this week, and they still gave up big plays. It's hard to go against the mahomes Andy Reid pairing in this one, so I won't. But I do think Washington's offense will make it more interesting. And now, after this break, I'll be back with ESPN's Adam Teicher. The Chiefs have some familiar issues. This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, shouldn't your printer be smart too? It is with HP+. 
These printers know when they're running low, so you always get the ink you need delivered right when you need it. Plus, you save up to 50% on ink, so you can print whatever you want, as much as you want, any time you want. Huh, that is pretty smart. Get six free months of instant ink when you choose HP+. Conditions apply. Visit hp.com smart for details. This episode is brought to you by Shell. College football is best enjoyed at home. You know, the home that has no rooms because it's a stadium of 70,000 screaming fans. But wherever you are, ESPN and Shell can take your fandom further with savings up to 15 cents per gallon for Fuel Rewards members at Shell. Welcome home, football fans. Terms and conditions apply. See fuelrewards.com slash fuel your fandom for details. Shell is an official sponsor of ESPN College Football. ESPN, the ESPN logo, and ESPN College Football are registered trademarks of ESPN Incorporated. Welcome back. Now, here's my conversation with ESPN's Adam Teicher. All right, Adam. Well, I know the fans here have a lot of angst about their two and three team. I did not expect the same from the fan base you cover. What is going on with the Chiefs? Wow. Um, <laughs> I could keep you here for hours with that one, John. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing is this, this is truly a horrendous. The Chiefs are truly horrendous defensively. Um, they're averaging uh, about over seven yards of play is what they allowed on average, which is uh, on pace to be the worst in NFL history. Um, I can't name you one thing they do well on defense. They, they, um, uh, there's just not one thing they can hang their hat on. I mean, they've had some teams uh, recently that didn't play defense very well, but they did certain things that would give opponents problems. In 2018, they gave up a lot of points, but they rushed the quarterback really well and they created turnovers. They don't do anything well this year. They're just uh, just a, a pushover, basically, with whatever the opponents try to do. So uh, it, it's been a mess. The offense is trying to keep up with that. And uh, they've had some success in that, but they, they failed uh, certainly last week against the Bills. So uh, it's been a bad mix right now. And until they fix this defense, I just don't know that it can, it's going to work for the Chiefs. They, their, their offense is under so much pressure to score basically every time it has the ball. And it's, uh, it's not working that well right now. So where is it? What's been the biggest surprise with the day? Which aspect and where are teams really hurting them? <laughs> it sounds like all yeah. over, but, but is there anything in particular? Yeah, um, th- this the chiefs came out of training camp thinking they were going to be pretty good defensively and not necessarily dominant or top 10 maybe, but, but certainly good enough to get them where they want to go. But uh, it, it, nothing has worked right. And so the chiefs are really searching for answers. This has really caught them off by surprise. Um, you know, the first couple opponents, the chiefs had tried running the ball and ran it really well. They threw for, or they ran for uh, about 200 uh, yards each on the first two games. And then since then, uh, it's a pass rush that is just, it allows the opponent to do whatever it wants. I mean, the Chiefs are having so much trouble, even when they blitz generating pressure, that it's just been a sort of a buffet for opponents. Whatever they really want to do, they can make the Chiefs pay for it. So it's it's just been a total mess. And that's what makes it so difficult for the Chiefs. It's not like they're plugging one leak or two leaks defensively, they're trying to fix a lot of things right now. And uh, it's going to be a big challenge. I think the people listening to this are saying, which team are you talking about? Because <laughs> everything you're saying kind of applies here. I mean, to a degree, I think the path, the line here is, is actually starting to play a lot better, but there's just so many issues in coverage that there are constant breakdowns. I see like, you know, Sorensen gets picked on a lot. Is, is he a yeah. legit problem? Is he a guy that people are taking advantage of? At safety? Yeah, he is. And and certainly the Bills did last week, but other opponents have as well. And the Chiefs are putting him in a lot of bad situations. I mean, Dan Sorensen came here as an undrafted player several years ago, did a nice job um, as a part-time player, but now he's out there. He was out there for every snap against the Bills the other night, and that's a, a pretty common thing. I mean, he plays basically in every every package on defense that the Chiefs have. And it's not that opponents are finding a way to isolate him and, and making the Chiefs pay for this. And uh, I don't know that Dan Sorensen was ever supposed to be an every down player. I, I think the idea when they got him was he could do a lot of different things for them, but not necessarily on, in, on every down. And, and uh, so um, it's been a problem for the Chiefs that they uh, not only are playing him every down, but he, he's being exposed and they got to figure something out there. 
What is Chris Jones's status? Yeah, we'll know more a little bit today, uh, later today, but, um, you know, he has an, a, a wrist injury that uh, it prevented him from playing uh, last week against the Bills. He played the previous three weeks with the injury, was really ineffective, and so the Chiefs decided they were just going to sit him out of practice last week and then uh, I'll hold him out of the game to see if maybe they can get this thing to calm down a little bit. But uh, he had a nice game in the opener. He did have two sacks in the opener, and then uh, it's been nothing from Chris Jones since then. So uh, Chiefs need him back to speed, but uh, um, they, they've got to get some players playing well around him as well. So let's go to the offense because that's, you know, obviously that's why the Chiefs still, everybody thinks they still have a chance because of Patrick Mahomes. You wrote about his turnover issues the other day. Six interceptions already, which I think matches his total from last year, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, is it, it sure is does. It just, and he's always been a guy who scrambles and throws. Up. Is it sometimes things just catch up to you when you do that? Or what is there something else he's doing that's not working quite as well as it had in the past? A couple of these have been bad breaks. Um, there's been a couple of tip balls that have gone to the opponent. Those kinds of things hadn't happened. I mean, tip balls were, were going for incompletions in the past. So it's been a little bit of bad luck, but he'll tell you that he's pressing a little bit. I mean, there, there's a lot of pressure on the chiefs offensively more than there's been since he's been with the chiefs to score, um, uh, put up a big number every week and he's thrown some balls. He's forced some passes that are unlike him. Uh, you know, he gets this gunslinger mentality and people compare him to Brett Favre. I think that is completely unfair comparison because Brett Favre, as we knew, would, would throw into coverage right. and, 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 and uh, you know, that's not been Pat Mahomes' game. It really hasn't uh, since he's been with the Chiefs, but uh, it has been a little bit this year. And, and uh, you know, so I, I feel like there's been a lot of pressure on the offense to score. I mean, Andy Reid has even indicated he just needs to calm down a little bit and not try to get a touchdown on every play. And I think that'll help. I don't think it's necessarily an X and O thing. It's more, hey, just, just calm down a little bit. The Chiefs are, are playing offense right now like their hair is on fire. And they've got to just settle down a little bit and not uh, not try to uh, score on every single play. And I think that will help. But we'll see. I mean, the Chiefs have uh, what nine turnovers in the last three games. Uh, two game, two of those games, they had four turnovers. So uh, it's been a real problem for them. And until they get that fixed, I, I don't see much uh, much hope for them. Well, I, th I think, again, people listening say, well, he might be facing the right defense for him this week. But yeah. the one thing that this team has been doing better, again, the defensive line, and they can apply yeah. some pressure and all that. And it's been better the last couple of weeks. Um, how has the Chiefs rebuilt their offensive line? How are they doing? Yeah, I wonder a little bit about that matchup because uh, the Chiefs have improved on the offensive line since the start of the season, but still five new starters. Five guys who weren't with the team last year, three of them rookies, a left tackle who's trying to establish himself a left tackle. He's been a right tackle. So they, they, they've had some growing pains. Uh, um, looks like they may have lost one of their uh, interior players, guard Joe Tooney, broke his hand last week. I'm not sure of his status, but I, I would be surprised if he plays Sunday. So first change they're going to have there. So um, you know, a lot going on there for the chiefs, uh, but they, they play better lately. And uh um, I was looking, kind of looking forward to that matchup to see how they stood against uh, the Washington's front. But um, um, without Tooney, maybe things change a little bit. And I, obviously, because Patrick can extend plays, it can sometimes be hard to tell. But has the protection been pretty good overall? Yeah, I, early on, it was a little bit spotty, but uh, better lately. You know, he's bailed a couple times on some pretty clean pockets, mm -hmm. which is um, that that's been an issue of his as well. So, uh, in the past. So um, it's maybe you look at it a little bit and say, wow, he's having to, to move around a lot and scramble a lot. Some of that's on him and not so much on his, uh, on his blockers. So uh, um, I feel like they've done a better job than maybe it looks like they have. And then obviously the bills played that cover two the other night. Now the bills, you know, I think it becomes a blueprint for them. The bills have terrific safeties. That is a terrific defense. I mean, I love watching them play defense. Yeah. Has that. that been has that has that been the blueprint though this year to play that soft cover two and just kind of force them to march down the field? Yeah, yeah, soft cover two and and not blitzing. I mean, their their teams are covering with seven and eight guys every single play. I mean, their Chiefs have seen very few blitzes this year, and you know you, the the um, the theory used to be when you're playing the Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs, keep them off the field. Don't let them be on the field 
try to do what you can offensively to maybe run some clock and, and keep them off the field. It's, it's kind of gone the other way now. It's, it's like, we're okay with them being on the field as long as we don't let them have big plays right. and, and they're making that work. The chiefs uh, had the ball for almost 33 minutes against the bills. The other night, they ran 25 more plays than the bills did and still got blown out. Wow. I mean, it was uh, the, the teams are doing a great job of, um, of uh, taking away that big play. And she said one pass play of more than 20 yards in, in 54 pass attempts um, against the bills. So the Bills did a great job with it. Not not everybody's been as good with that as the Bills have, but that's the kind of thing the, the, the Chiefs are facing. I mean, the first drive of the game really told you what you needed to know um, the other night. The Chiefs had the ball 17 plays, 17 plays, six and a half minutes, and still only got a field goal with wow. it. I feel like at that point, the Bills knew they were going to win the game because they did exactly what they wanted right. on that drive and kept the Chiefs out of the end zone. And, uh, you know, that, that drive was just an amazing. It was just uh, – um, uh, short gain after short gain after short gain and the Chiefs had, had made it work on that drive until they got into the red zone but um, they're, they're having problems with penalties they're having problems as we know with turnovers so that they're they're having trouble putting together these long uh, time consuming long uh, you know 12 15 play drives and uh, that, that's one of their problems right now. So uh, I, I'm, I'm eager to see what kind of strategy Washington employs on Sunday to see if they do the same kind of thing, because that's what the Chiefs have been looking at the last few weeks. What kind of loss is Clyde Edwards Hilaire? You know, not as big as uh, you might think. I, I don't feel like the Chiefs necessarily played to his strengths a lot. He's a, a really good pass receiver, and the Chiefs just don't throw him the ball a lot. Uh, they, they, it, it, that's been a little bit of a Mahomes thing, and that he wants to go downfield with the ball instead of checking down. So um, Clyde edwards Alaire, I, I don't feel like the Chiefs have gotten a lot out of him. In, in the running game, he's been a productive player, but not as not fast, not, not particularly quick. And um, you know, I feel like the Chiefs have had lost some big plays when he um, uh, just has trouble getting through the hole as quickly as maybe some other backs. So there, there are other backs like Daryl Williams in particular is a good player, um, versatile player. The, you know, the chiefs are comfortable with him in all situations, third down, short yardage, that kind of stuff. So uh, um, I, I don't feel like the, the chiefs will necessarily feel that loss a whole lot. I feel like they can move on without him. I'm, I'm eager to see how they can get Josh Gordon maybe more involved than he was last week. He got in for, I think, nine or 10 plays, caught one pass. I, I, I'm, I'm eager to see where that's going here. All right. Now, here's the biggest and probably the hardest question for you to answer. This, we're talking Kansas City. What's your go-to barbecue place there? Well, it's 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 hard to limit it to just one. I mean, yes, Joe's, it is. Is, Joe's is spectacular. I mean, you can't go wrong at Joe's. Uh, there's a, a place called Jack Stack, which is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Sardas is a good one. Um, y you can you can basically throw a dart at a list blindfolded, and wherever it lands, you go there and you have a great meal. So it's it's all good. I'm jealous of that. Although I tell people, people ask me like, "What's the best barbecue place near you?" And I say, "It's my house." So, <laughs> but, but I, I like to. I, I love going to Kansas City. I know, unfortunately, we're not going there, but I can at least think about the Kansas City barbecue, and I love it. And so. Anyways, and I'm having a guy from Joe's on too. So all good. Adam, thanks a lot. Fantastic thanks. insight. Um, great job. Thank you. Good, good stuff, John. After this break, it's time for barbecue talk because they are playing Kansas City after all with Ryan Barrows, the vice president of operations from Joe's Barbecue in Kansas City. I love their Z-Man sandwich. If you're ever there, get it. So I asked Ryan for some tips on brisket and more. You can visit joeskc.com to visit their website. Enjoy. Welcome back. Now here's my conversation with Ryan Barrows from Joe's Barbecue in Kansas City. All right, Ryan. Well, I have to tell you first, a couple years ago when Washington played Kansas City on a Monday night game, I stood in line. It was 90 degrees. Stood in line for an hour to get a Z-Man sandwich at Joe's. And I was sweating my butt off. And like, I was like, can I, do I have time? Do I have time to stay? It was well worth it. So whatever you guys do at the Z-Man, it's fantastic. So I appreciate you coming on. And first, I, I want to get into um, just what makes Kansas City barbecue special and unique? You know, it's it's one of those things that that the history of barbecue in, in this town specifically is is very rich. And it is uh, it's 
you know, at this stage, it's generational. And, and the really fun thing to see is the evolution of what barbecue has been in Kansas City. I mean, I'm 42 years old, and my first experience at a barbecue joint that I recall was going to Arthur Bryant's with my dad, who gave us the pep talk in the car, make sure you know what you want before you go in, because they're not going to have a lot of patience for you when you get in there. And uh, he was right, and I froze up and, and got a little <laughs> bit of a tongue lashing from the guys. But, uh, but, but barbecue is is fundamentally kansas city when you think about the sports teams and the and the tailgating and just what everybody likes to do in this town we like to cook and hang out outside and and you know we as a community kansas city barbecue is something that uh I, believe it or not is very passionate uh amongst uh, amongst the city what what is the unique because and again i mean i was there when i was there and it was great for me because again i got the z-man and anybody who ever goes to kansas city get the Z-Man from Joe's, but what is it that is unique about Kansas City barbecue compared to other areas? You know, in, in Kansas City, we, we take kind of the best of, of barbecue, if you will, and, you know, when you when you look at what Texas does, they, they concentrate predominantly on beef and brisket, right. and it's salt and pepper rub, and then if you go to Memphis, it's predominantly ribs and dry rub. Carolinas, you're cooking the whole hog. You know, in, in Kansas City, we kind of do all of that yeah. sands the whole hog. We, we take and, and cut it into uh, multiple pieces and we, we cook pork shoulders and then we cook, you know, ribs and, and some places will cook loin back ribs or baby back ribs. Other places will cook the spare ribs. Some places cook rib tips. Uh, but, but I think that anywhere you look in Kansas City, no matter what you're looking for, you can find what you're looking for here. You'll find great brisket. You'll find fantastic burn-ins, some of the best ribs in the world. Um, you know, we, we just like to say that, that Kansas City is kind of the melting pot and does, does everything reasonably well. So let's get to what you guys do well. And I assume, like, again, I keep bringing up the Z-Man. And if you can describe what that is for people and what makes it so good. It's a combination of smoked brisket on a toasted Kaiser roll uh, with melted smoked provolone cheese, a couple of onion rings, and then drizzled with our barbecue sauce. It was the invention of Jeff uh, Staney, our owner, who back you know, 20, 25 years ago was in a kitchen, kind of bored, had received some samples of products that he didn't really think he was going to do anything with, but one day put a sandwich together and, and thought it was pretty, pretty darn good. Uh, there was a grassroots campaign with a, with a local DJ about naming the sandwich. And by the time the sandwich, you know, had its name, it was named the Z-Man because that was the DJ's name. So everybody would just come in and say, Hey, give me that Z-Man. Um, it was one of the first barbecue sandwiches that we're aware of that, that incorporated more than just a singular meat and or sauce on pieces of bread. Um, and, it's been popularized all over the United States and even yeah. world. We've, we've heard about it coming from other places too. What's the key for your brisket? What do you, is there, I don't know if you can, you know, I don't know if you want to give away secrets, but what can you tell people about what you do with your brisket um, and how you cook it? Well, the key to, to any cooking and, and the, the craft of cooking is you got to start with really good ingredients. And right. so we buy, we buy an upper half choice products. We're guaranteed really quality beef all year round. Um, and then one of the things that, that's unique to us that we probably started doing eight to 10 years ago is we actually buy whole briskets and then we separate the point and the flat. And so the point is where your burn ends come from. The right. flat is where that sliced brisket comes from. And what we found was that we really like the flavor profile of both pieces of meat when we expose the extra surface area to let that rub caramelize. So you're getting more of that caramelization, more of the smoky flavor on both cuts of meats, uh, which then also allows us to, to really dial in how we cook it. We cook both of them at temp different temperatures for different periods of time. So is, 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 do you use in the Z-Man, is it just all from the flat then? Well, it started that way, but now you can get burn-in Z-Man, ham Z-Man, pork Z-Man, jumbo mm. Z-Man. I mean, wow. you name it. And our customers have pretty well uh, come up with how they can, how they want to do it. It's, and, it, and it's kind of fun. Everybody that comes in and says, you know, I want a jumbo burn-in Z-Man with uh, extra brisket on the side, or, you know, extra brisket instead. And they think they're the first people that's ever ordered it. Well, in fact, we actually have buttons in the system now so that we can kind of process that order a little quicker than we used to. So pretty fun. What's the key to a good tailgate in your mind? Oh, well, um, I would say it starts with good weather. 
uh, <laughs> most of the time. In my mind, I mean, we I, I had the fortune to go to the Bills game, and we had an awesome tailgate experience. The weather was great until the game started and started <laughs> raining, and and then of course we all know how yes. that ended up. But uh, but no, you you plan ahead. You make sure that you've got a you've got a, a good plan. And I think I think some people try to do way too much. You know, you just pick one thing that's the centerpiece and then fill it in around with uh, with whatever else you want to do but you know it's funny that i took to our tailgate i actually took some of our pre-made burn ends that we cook in our usda facility and ship we basically freeze them and then ship them all over the united states so i right. took brisket burn ends and pulled pork to uh, to our tailgate and i had the people i was with were like my god this is good they're like and this this wasn't cooked yesterday i'm like no it was probably cooked about two months ago wow but but that's uh but it's really fun and then we have different heating methods but yeah I, for for my experience i don't like to take the grill and everything else i like to be smart about it so we can enjoy our time and so uh i took a, a little portable stove and a pot of water and heated stuff up in the bags just like we tell you to and boy it turned out magnificent do you have a favorite recipe that you could share with um with the smoke or anything Oh, uh, we, it depends on the day. I mean, the, the really cool thing about barbecue is, is when you start it barbecue for most households is if you're going to cook a brisket, you're going to start with a 15 pound brisket end right. up with somewhere around seven to eight pounds of meat. Well, unless right. you're having a big party, that's a lot of product. So I think one of the most fun things is to look at what you do with your leftovers and man, you can create some of the best tacos out there. You can create oh, some yes. really interesting soups and stews. And, and I mean, we, we did a collaborative dinner with, with a chef that's been in business for over 60 years here as family has where we took our smoked pulled pork and did an Italian dinner with him and and used a pulled pork bolognese with with you know the smoked pork and it's just really really fun to see where you can stretch the use of just a little bit of smoke you don't want it overly smoky but a little bit of smoke goes into tons of cuisines it, it's a lot of fun so in answering your question no not one recipe i think i do a yeah. lot well and 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 i know like i like to use a smoker um a, a decent amount of people who listen to me know i like to barbecue and i love talking about this and i love eating it even more is there a tip for good, what would be your tip to make a good brisket? Because that can be a tricky one for people to, to get done right. It is, it is tricky. And, and I think, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is proper, when I say proper equipment, um, the single best thing you can have is a really good thermometer. Right. And, and we use, you know, we use a, a brand called Thermapen. Um, and, but what that does is it allows you to, number one, feel what the meats, the muscle structure of the meat's doing when you slide your thermometer in. But it also gives you kind of a, a check and, and balance on what you think you feel. If you feel like you think it's done, but you're only reading 170 degrees, something's not right. And I do think that one of the things that I've seen in, in not only my experience, but uh, in talking with other people is, is, you know, the, the desire or the willingness not to push a brisket as far as it needs to go with temperature. You really got to get it up into the, the low 200s, you know, 202, 205, depending on what you're, what you're doing. But I will also tell you when I cook brisket at home, I, I cheat a little bit and I buy the best brisket I can buy as kind of an insurance policy that's got more internal marbling. Right. We buy some product from, uh, it's, a, it's American Wagyu, it's called Snake River Farms product. It's phenomenal. And if you're gonna invest that amount of time, it's a few extra bucks, but, uh, but it's, as I said, it's kind of the insurance policy. You know, it's funny you say that because when I've nailed my brisket, it's when I've been patient. And instead of like, and, then, and I start earlier in the day, I'll start early in the morning, so that way I'm not impatient, like, oh my gosh, it's dinner time. I've got to get this done. And then you start panicking because it's like, oh, it's only at 180 and I know it needs to be up here. And, and half hour ago it was at 185. Why did it go down? So it seems right. like patience is a big key for that. Well, it is. And, and you kind of, you, you said something else there too, timing it's you, there's nothing wrong with getting your brisket into the, the 200 to 202 range and then pulling it off and letting it sit Correct. at room temp for 30 minutes and then throwing it in a cooler for two hours until you're ready to cook or until you're ready to eat. It's, it's when, like you said, when you're trying to rush it along at the end, just to get it on the plate, yeah. it, it needs time to rest and, and you've got to give it that time or else you're, you're going to end up with something you're not as happy with. with. All right, Ryan, I want to get, um, I want you to tell people where they can order your stuff. But first I got to ask you about this game because I know how crazy Kansas city is about the chiefs and they're, 
they were, they've lost a few more games than probably people realize. What's the mood of the fan base there? It's a little bit desperate right now, I think, is, is I don't think that's overreaching. I, maybe, maybe a little panicked. It's what it is, is it's unfamiliar, <clears throat> unfamiliar territory for right. us, at least in the last three or four years. Right. You know, when, when, once we finally got the monkey off the back with, with winning a few playoff games, getting to the AFC championship in 18, and then winning it all in 19, you know, it, you find yourself as, as a Chiefs fan, just, you're never out of it. You're never, the game's never over. And I think uh, as it stands right now, that feeling's starting to go away a little bit. Uh, but I know deep down, you know, we truly believe in, in the team and we believe in, in you know, the coach and, and obviously the, the quarterback. Yeah. Um, but but you can't sit here and, and tell yourself lies that everything's going to be just fine. And and we're not in a bad spot because we are we're, we're a little 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 bit worse off than we would have liked. Right. Do you look at this week, though, and say, oh, OK, they can get healthy this week? They've got to. If, if we're if we have any desire or any thoughts about doing anything in the postseason, it's it's got to start somewhere, and it better start soon because, you know, we go two and four. Uh, the 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 glimmer of the postseason kind of starts to dissipate, and uh, it becomes a, a faint a faint uh, vision. If you well, I think the way the Washington defense is played is probably a good timing for the Chiefs offense to to face them. And is that kind of how people there view it? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because I, as a fan of football, I, I look back to the beginning of the year and it's funny if, if we would have, if you would have told us that, that we'd be having this conversation now and both of our teams would be tied with their records, I would think as a Washington fan, you'd be pleased as punch and, and we'd be feeling pretty good. But, but no, I mean, I, I look at that Washington defense and it's impressive, you know, especially on paper. Um, and I hope that, uh, that, you know, our, our revamped offensive line can, can keep our franchise quarterback clean. Because uh, for the most part they have, but you guys have some game records on that line, and and it's uh, it's at some point it's going to come together. I just hope it gives it another couple of weeks. That's that's what I'm, yeah. So we'll see. All right, Ryan. Last thing, where can people get your stuff? So you can go to our website. It's www.joeskc.com, and you just click on the ship Joe's tab. And and the cool thing is, you, pretty much anything that uh, most of the things that that you can get. On our website, you can get in the restaurant. Um, everything is cooked basically on the same smokers that we use in the restaurant. There's no industrial cooking going on. Uh, we built a facility specifically to cook this product the way it is in the restaurant. And then when you order your product, you'll get the reheating guide that tells you exactly how to reheat it, like I said, with the water bath, uh, to ensure that you get the exact desired result that that we know that that uh that can happen so go to the ship joe's tab i think saturday i'm pretty sure saturday we're starting a promotion for 15 percent off nationwide hmm. no code no nothing else just go put everything in your basket and you'll be discounted 15 percent. so um, maybe a little bit late to get it for the for the chiefs uh, football team game but uh, but you can certainly have some for the next weekend there you go. Ryan, thanks a lot for coming on. I appreciate it. Had fun talking about it. And again, I love the Z-Man. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Adam and Ryan for joining me. And thank you for listening. Again, I don't take you for granted. I'll be back with another episode after Sunday's game. Talk to you next time.